Are you rich? Yes, I am here. Should we sing the theme song? There's yeah. three of us. There's that- three of us. Well, what is that? Mostly you will see. Well, don't you know the the notorious Breaking Bad soundtrack <laughs> intro song? That's what uh, Walt, Jesse, and Saul all sing together in the premiere <laughs> episode. There's wow. three of us. Wow. Did you skip so over the fun. intro? Like, who would do such a thing? Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the uh, Is It Breaking Bad podcast, everybody's favorite Breaking Bad rewatch podcast. Today, we are covering the second half of season two. And for some reason, even though his supposedly favorite episode in the entire show, Four Days Out, is uh, in this section of, you know, review, Heartsy couldn't make it today. So, you know, what's up with that, E. Rich? Um, Hartsy says that he's going to his aunt's birthday, so I just want to wish, uh, Hartsy's aunt a happy birthday here. I hope that, uh, it's much better than doing a podcast with us. I don't know, when I was in high school, I had a friend, and whenever I wanted to hang out with him, suddenly his aunt would be in the hospital from cancer. So is this one of those situations, like, this is... Does Hartsy's aunt have a birthday whenever Hartsy does not want to show up (laughs) to a gathering? Yeah, maybe it's like the aunt from Jesse, you know? She probably never had cancer. Well, I think right? what happened was Skylar White was uh, working in the same office as Jesse's aunt, and all of her smoke breaks is what gave Jesse's aunt cancer, just like how she gave Walt cancer, just like how she's giving baby oh, Holly wow. cancer. Really? Wow. That's the, just, that's the metaphor. Just blame her for everything. That's Skylar important. is the cancer of the Breaking Bad universe. She literally gives it to people physically through smoking and wow. uh, metaphorically through her actions, really. I wow. was I was just thinking that 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 Skylar was was so so good this season, okay? <laughs> she she was so reasonable the entire time. <laughs> And and then she she finally takes your advice and just just leaves after she discovers all of Walt's bullshit. So how could you possibly still take offense at her actions? <laughs> e Rich, you're backing me up on this one, right? Now that hearty has uh, yeah, gone, I'm, I need somebody on the massage. It, it is such it is such a like cathartic moment at the end of the season when she's like, "No, Walt, fuck you with all your shit. I'm out of here. Bye bye." <laughs> you yeah, enjoyed it. Not. Oh god! Yeah. Oh, I would yeah. say, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did Anna Gunn get at least nominated for season two? Because that speech at the end of the season, when she gives a recap of like every single episode in order, and she's revealing all these like <laughs> truth bombs, like, oh yeah, Walt, your mom doesn't even know you have cancer. <laughs> like, dude, like every single sentence, I'm shitting my pants just as much as Walt is. Uh, I don't know. Can we look up if she was nominated for anything? Because that was. Like a great scene. Yeah, we can. Oh. Like, I, I, like the thing is, she gets her own kind of little story with Ted and Ted starting the company, and like the, I, I believe even that episode has her singing uh, the Marilyn Monroe uh, "Happy Birthday, Mr. President" to him. Speaking which of which, is Florian, it is. <laughs> it's Hartsey's aunt's birthday, Florian. If you would like to sing "Happy Birthday, Mr. Hartsey's Aunt," wow. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> wow, Mr. Warren, Damn. Blows away. Instead of Mr. Uh, President, it, it's Mr. Hartsy's aunt. <laughs> well, it, it, it's 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 your birthday. It, it's your birthday. It's it's three of your birthday. That that's that's how I sing. It's that's, your birthday, you know. Wanted. Okay, well, it is a competition, so E. Rich, go ahead. <laughs> Straw Happy poll in the description. Birthday to you. <laughs> Okay, my turn. I can't do it. <laughs> hey, hey, ho, ho, Hartsy's aunt has got to go. Hey. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I hope I, she comes I, on. I hope she comes no, on. No, she, uh... she's going to probably have like 20 more birthdays in her life. <laughs> There's only going to be like 13 more Breaking Bad podcasts. Hartsy needs to really yeah, you know, prioritize like things straight. I, I was actually thinking maybe we should just like do another loop, you know, just watch Breaking Bad again after we, we've, we've after done we finish Better Call Saul and uh, yeah. Well, I guess we have to watch El Camino in between the two, right? Yeah, All we're right. gonna, I, I we're have, gonna go full circle, watch everything twice. What are you saying, Anna Rich? Was not Anna Gunn was not nominated for this season. Hmm. Well, I guess <laughs> she only surprise. had the one good scene. 
<laughs> well, she did. She did win the entire internet's hate all of the time. So, I guess it's a close second, right? I, I think I heard she still gets hate for for her role in yeah. this. Well, at what point That's do you big. realize you're getting hate from fourteen year old boys, and you just kind of <laughs> shrug it off? The fourteen year old boys watching Breaking Bad. Hartsy wow, was just, watching yeah. it when he was seven. Yeah, and he was definitely sending her hate mail then. Yeah. Yeah. He is to blame for everything. He probably did have an iPad when he was seven, you know, <laughs> starting him younger and younger on that shit. I see fucking two year olds on him now. She's just constantly telling her that Walt did nothing wrong. <laughs> his, his parents walked in and seven year old hearts, he's on the iPad, like sending Anna Gunn an angry email. Yeah, maybe he even did a voice a voice chat, and it was exactly okay, so like, yeah, like do your Walter impression White of Walt Junior, no. but, but high pitched, <laughs> like a seven year old would be doing it. <laughs> In uh, your gun, yeah. I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I, I think both of us just got canceled, E. Rich. <laughs> All right. I don't think that was very good. You know what? I'm, I'm ready. But hey, yeah, no, Hartsy's not here. Somebody strong. has to sound like that. Well, you're both Trump doing that impression of, of the, the crippled man, okay? You, you, you're mm -hmm. both super Hey, that powerful. was physical humor. This is vocal humor. Yeah, we got it. Uh, we got to explore new territory if we're going to win. <laughs> uh, there are so many cringe parts of this season in a good way to me. The wow. whole Walt website is just one of the funniest <laughs> things I have ever seen. And how <laughs> proud and excited Walt Jr. is for putting it together. Wait, why why do it, you think it's it cringe? Up? Because the website looks awful. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> terrible. What? No, no, I'm not. Dude, yeah, this is 2008, I, I, and it was programmed by a 15 year old. I think it looks amazing. I literally looks, today could not make a better it website. Looks. <laughs> Space Jam website tier. Actually, the Space Jam website is probably slightly better. It has yeah. Comic Sans. It has a, a green background with yellow text. Yeah, but he didn't go to love. wetpaint.com or fucking GIMP or whatever fucking website kids use to make free websites. He programmed this himself as a 15 year old in 2008. It is not I, hard. He, he does the not have a programming class at his fucking Santa Fe, New Mexico, whatever high school. Okay, he, he's self-taught. He's physically handicapped. He probably can't even fucking <laughs> type. It's a miracle he made anything. Well, he appears wow. to be physically handi handicapped in cyberspace as well. So, so yeah, well, I mean, it translates. <laughs> He's created the metaverse before Elon <laughs> Musk even had a chance to buy it. And ruin it. Uh, if anything, it, it was ruined on arrival. I think Elon Musk also buying the metaverse might save it. <laughs> no. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. The metaverse. <laughs> like he, him buying the worst thing, making it even worse. Yeah. That's, I guess that <laughs> How could you make it worse sure. than it is right now? <laughs> well, I, eight dollars. I, I guess not. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. You'd have to pay for it. <laughs> hey, we, we have six whole episodes of Breaking Bad we need to dissect, and we are finally to the introduction of the main character of the Breaking Bad cinematic <laughs> yeah. universe. Right. Jimmy McGill, aka Saul Goodman. We finally see him in episodes uh, eight here. Eight. So. I, I have a point about Saul's appearance here. Do you guys think that he sounds weird? And like, it, it's part of just him, uh, Bob Odenkirk kind of trying something out. Do you guys think he's, he sounds like he's putting on a bit of an accent at times in the show? I didn't notice. I think he sounds kind of like, like a tough guy. Like, uh, I think he sounded a little more gruff because he's playing older than he was at the time. And I'll right. also give them this. Uh, even in his very first episode of Breaking Bad, I think he looks older than he did at I any know. point as Jimmy McGill. Like, I don't know God, if it's makeup or, right or just the hair or what, but he, he fucking looks old as shit here. Unlike uh, Gus and Mike, possible. who look terrible in Better Call yeah, Saul. Yeah. <laughs> well, how did they do it? Why was he supposed to be older than, his, than he is? Because they, they shoot, shot the Better Call Saul show after this, Florian. Yeah, but how did they know that they'd need to make him look young and this? Well, I think uh, they want him to, I mean, to look like a, like a greasy uh, car, like an old car salesman, <laughs> lawyer type of guy. So they, you know, gave him the shitty hair. And uh, I think he kind of might have like a slouch or something. I don't know. There's like a, a dark, grisly presence about this version of the man. <laughs> yeah. 
But oh, he, wow. he has been through, you know, maybe in his head, you know, Bob Odenkirk knew, okay, I'm guessing I have a love interest in the past and, uh, and we had to watch Lalo shoot our friend. And that's why I'm just so dark and grizzled at this point. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk yeah. came up with all of that on the spot. <laughs> yeah, he was giving Vince notes years. on set. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. was constantly banging employees. We gotta make my prequel. I must be called. That's right. I have a I have a bit of a confession to make, which is that the first time watching the show, I heard people talk about, "Oh, this Saul character, he's the best. He's like so fun." And when I first watched it, I was like, "He's all right." I, I don't think he was in it enough for me to really uh, give a shit for the most part. But watching it again, he's he's really just a great character right out the right off the bat and uh yeah and they use him a lot more starting in season three right yeah yeah so yeah. I, I just heard a bunch of stuff and i was just like i, I don't know how much uh he's in, in this actually but yeah well he is always crazy competent he always gets them out of every jam all the time which is i, I guess pretty convenient you know they, they always just get into the worst trouble and then he just gets them out scot-free mm-hmm well, that's why he yeah, is the most fun character, because he has the bag of tricks. Like, he has a, the little black notebook full of uh, every criminal in town. And, you know, when you have that kind of resource, there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. And he's very creative also. I just watched a video uh, by this guy named What's Therapy on YouTube, and he analyzes Better Call Saul. And he did like an hour video about the artistic side of Saul and uh, all of his artistic projects and how he takes it so seriously. So uh, if you want more Saul analysis, go watch that after this podcast, I guess. Nice. Well, yeah, pretty I, interesting. I think I really like this season for complicated. Like, I, I just love the show overall for just adding complications again and again and again. And so, like, they've made all this meth. They've, like, cooked a whole bunch. And the idea should be, oh, we just sell that really simply, but it, it isn't that simple. There's territory to figure out. There's like now a lawyer to protect your money and to kind of like spread it around in the right way. And all of that complication just takes away money from them, takes away time from them. Like, I, I, I just like all of it. Yeah, and they got a guy killed who could have probably ended up getting more of them killed. So uh, always, always so close to, to to just everything falling apart around them. Mm -hmm. Should we talk about the elephant in the room, boys? Uh, hello, in Saul Goodman's introductory episode, the solution to the problem is a character called Jimmy In and Out, a man who chooses <laughs> to go to prison. Hello? Yeah. What? Yeah. It, it it's up to Varium, dude. The story ends where it begins. They tried to tell us, Monkey. They tried. Oh, wow. The answer was I in see. his very first fucking episode the whole time. <laughs> Wait, no. He has to be out again for that name to make sense. Hmm. The whole point yeah. is that it, it, they solve the problem at the end because a guy named Jimmy chooses to go to prison. Yeah, I guess Bravo that, Vince. Is... that that really is a Bravo Vince right there. Yeah, even though I think Peter Gould probably did it, but Bravo both Bravo of them. Gould. <laughs> this character was the uh, invention of Peter Gould, I do believe. I don't think Vince came up with Saul. Yeah, no, I saw I... his name start to get uh, get on here. It, it's super cool to see Gould kind of involved from the start, basically. It's so crazy how they just have these completely wacky characters and then it still ends up making like one of the best TV dramas ever, even though everything is just so insane. Hey, speaking of seeing the people's names pop up, would you guys be shocked to learn that the editor for Breaking Bad, Kelly Dixon, also edited Black Panther 2? Wow, oh, damn. Yeah, she's like this uh, rotund uh, black woman. <laughs> And wow. she's on every Insider podcast for Better Call Saul, and she ruins every single one. Like, she's very, <laughs> she, like, does not pay attention to the show or really, like, think about it critically. And every time she asks a question, it's, like, surface-level embarrassing bullshit, and it's horrible. Well, she's just an editor, so. <laughs> yeah. She just has to put it together. She shouldn't be on the podcast. She should go back to editing Black Panther. Uh-huh. <laughs> Is that why that one didn't make any sense, that movie? Hmm. Is it all her? The editing wow. was the problem and not the script or the dead actor. <laughs> there, there was nothing wrong with the editing in the movie. 
Yeah, I guess not. Well, I mean, didn't make any sense, so maybe she cut out important plot points. Who knows? Okay, while we're uh, doing this character by character, do we have any other thoughts on the introduction of Saul and uh, how they use him for the rest of season two? Yeah, I just think he's a fun character. He changes the show enough uh, to, to be interesting enough. Um, and knowing his long-term arc, it's really fulfilling to see him introduced here. It's so weird that his office is just so full of, of screaming babies and, <laughs> and, and, and jam-packed with, I guess, criminals and, and dr- drug beats, whores. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. and that's despite the fact that he is, like, like crazy competent. Why does he put up with all these these horrible people? <laughs> the- it's all about volume, baby. You get a bunch of people who have a bit of money and lawyer like that's all you need well uh so i guess he just takes literally any job but i guess he does have a decent price but does he do his his scams for all of them like how does he i don't think so because isn't it kind of isn't it kind of implied at some point in better call saul that he didn't start like breaking the law in a big way again until walter white showed up yeah, yeah, probably. But, but I, I think like he's he's just kind of a scummy lawyer who will represent people who either don't deserve representation or well, well, how fucking dare you, E. Rich? Hold first on, of on, all, I made a mistake. Hold <laughs> on. It, it's every lawyer's job to cover everyone, no matter what they do. But uh, yeah, so some people are definitely guilty, and yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, you probably can't convict them if nobody represents them. Hmm. Yeah, Somebody has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe the worst lawyer of them all will just do a horrible shot. But no, he... I don't know. I feel like he, he is already... No, wait. Jesse specifically said that he is a, a criminal lawyer. And yeah, he, I was going to bring that up because... He's quite ready to do lots of bad things. Uh, yeah. But so how are, how is he getting hired? I mean, I guess he maybe through Mike or something. But when Walt tries to, you know, bribe him, it, he says, fuck no, and get out of my office. I don't want to ever see you again. So how is yeah, Saul yeah. getting criminal clients if he's so, you know, uh, walled up there? Well, well I, just... I, think it's, I think it's one of the things where he has to know ahead of time that it's worth doing uh, to take a bribe or to, to get involved in that level. So this is just Walt being an unprofessional, you know, incompetent guy in this world. No, yeah, exactly. I, I, I definitely think that, that Walt thinks of, of being, like, not a real criminal at that point, even though, I mean, he is definitely terrible already, but I, I guess he, he just looks too straight to, to, to take a bribe from him, to, too much like a cop, maybe. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, Saul is just a bit too suspicious and not willing to just take bribes from anyone. Well, I mean, he should be he should be suspicious. It'd be quite easy to to catch him like, if if they just sent literally anyone there and and he takes the bribe and then they just arrest him, you know, for for taking a bribe. Uh, what do we think of Saul's cold heartedness that he displays here? Because for one, he says, you know, why not just kill Badger? Like he just doesn't even care about uh, Jesse having his friend die. And then when Combo is killed. He also, like, just does not give a fuck. Like, he says something very dismissive about Combo being killed to Jesse. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, like, it, is this the result of uh, years of being jaded about Kim and all these shenanigans? Or, like, what the fuck? Why is he treating Jesse like he's not even human? Well, he probably does. I think there's just a low-level drug game that he's aware of, and, and those people die all the time. So yeah, it's just be- kind of like, yeah. I, I, I can't even imagine sucks. Jimmy McGill like talking to somebody who's like, well, I, I guess he did do this to uh, Howard Hamlin's widow, but fuck. Yeah. It. But like, what did Jesse's not Howard Hamlin's widow? Like, fuck. Well, I assume that he thought that Jesse just had like like ten guys, maybe twenty. He probably didn't know that that was like his, one of his remaining two guys, you know, <laughs> or like one of killed. his best friends his whole life. Oh yeah, that too. What? I guess we we see a lot of Badger and, and Jesse, but do, do, do we know much of, of Combo and Jesse scenes? Or there, did they do? Much that, that's in the what's past? weird is that they play Combo and like his death eventually as like kind of a big deal for Jesse. But have we really seen them hang out all that we, much? We later see in a flashback that I think will be in season three that in episode one when Walt gives all the money to Jesse to buy the RV. 
Jesse takes the money and him and Combo and I think Badger go to like strip clubs and like spend all of Walt's money partying. So I think they were friends and they eventually do get the RV by like stealing it from Combo's, you know, grandparents or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think I, they're friends. I wish, I wish that they had established that a bit more so that so that Combo's death really realistically hits Jesse. Uh, there are three him. scenes of them smoking meth together. There's a scene where they eat snacks together. Like, how do you constitute friendship, <laughs> E. Rich? That's all I do with my friends. I don't know. Showing us that oh, uh, that wild uh, time they had together would count. There should have been one scene of like a genuine scene of go-karting between all of Jesse and his meth buddies to establish, yeah. you know, that because it would hit a lot harder later on when he's go-karting alone. Yeah, yeah. And they all seem like they would want to go-kart, although Combo probably wouldn't be able to fit very wouldn't well. Wouldn't be able to fit in there. Yeah. yeah. He's a big boy. Well, yeah. a, a lot of the stuff is just like established later like when i when i went back to to watch break Bang and i was like ah god he's gonna spend that money in a strip club but luckily <laughs> they, they they skipped that part in the first in the first season and they just brought up that concept later so i i wasn't annoyed when i watched it yeah it's a very funny reveal when it finally <laughs> happens but uh we gotta maybe we, we should focus on season two yeah 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 i think so uh, well there there's a lot to, to talk about. Well, I, I, hit, hit us, Florian. What do you want to talk about? Well, I, I don't know. Do we want to go for Chain already? <laughs> because I, I... Well, without Heartsy here, what's even the point in talking about Jane? Like, I, I don't get to hear about how he applauded as she was <laughs> choking on vomit and out. died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Completely her fault, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well. not her fault. I was I was <laughs> amazed in this this rewatch of how much they set up that she knows not to to lay down that way. Hey, that you know what she Walt, should know? Don't do heroin. Look, look. If you do heroin, <laughs> you deserve to choke to death on a vomit. That's the that risk you're taking. It's well, I can't disagree with moving that. Jesse, which moves her uh, <laughs> back, and yeah, it, it is yeah. completely on him. It's actually a really interesting scene on so many levels because Walt comes back because he decided, no, I'm, I'm not going to give up on Chessie. I'm, I'm going to see if he's okay. And then he, he does, and then he accidentally knocks over the girlfriend who, who then is choking to death. And then he's deciding, oh man, she, she just blackmailed me and she's clearly such a horrible influence on Chessie. And he's like, hmm, nah, maybe she should die. And then he, he just watches in horror as, as she dies, but he, he, he doesn't want to stop it because because he knows that she is a big problem for him and, well, clearly a bad influence. So it's, it, it's is great, she but... any worse of an influence than he is? Well, I mean, I mean, you see that Chessie was definitely going into... I, I mean, they, they were definitely going to take so many drugs, they might have very likely died right away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they're both young, sexy, drug-addicted people, and they were equally toxic and uh, negatively influential on each other, and they got each other re-addicted to meth and heroin, so yeah, I think they're both to blame on that one. Yeah, when I originally saw it, I was like totally buying into that they were going to like turn their life around, and I never even considered the drugs to be that bad, but... Like looking at now, that shit is is such a problem, and and they they were so, they they really wanted to quit, but then they they just never could, you know. They, they well, we don't one know. More, one more hit. If well, they if they specifically said they they would flush it, but then they got high instead. Right, but you know, it's just one last hoorah, you know, wings of redemption yeah, style. It could have been one last thing. Because <laughs> if they're getting the money from Walt the next day, you know, they said they they're gonna run away together, start new lives. Maybe they do go clean. You don't know. Oh, well, they already had the money. Did they? Yeah, he, he gave them the money, and then they, uh, so they, they were going to leave decide. the next day. Yeah, they were yeah. going to leave, and they were going to flush the drugs, but then they didn't. Yeah, so if they, if only they would have flushed those drugs, they could have had perhaps <laughs> a happier ending. I guess that's the moral <laughs> of the story, kids. Flush they those one drugs. One last ride. One last ride. Yeah, yeah. I, I really and really, it's not. It's really the fault. The blame <laughs> lies on Jane's dad. You know, <laughs> Walt would not have gone back there if not for that heart to heart with Jane's dad. Hey, maybe uh, don't be so judgmental if your daughter's addicted to heroin, if you're such a fucking alcoholic, huh? Discord, huh? Guy from Star Trek, motherfucker. 
Cute. Huh? Yeah. Sitting at the fucking bar? Talking to Walter oh, White? No! He, no, you go thing. home here's and your daughter thing. still lives to this day. Oh, uh -huh. it's not fair. He he inspired Walt to, to look out for Chessie. It's too bad that that involved murder, but, you know... He, he, I, he, I think... He, gave a, he imparted a, a good moral, you know, not to give up on family. I, I think their meeting at the end is a little bit too over the top. That they would run into no each way. other and talk to each other and talk around each other enough to not realize that they were intimately involved with both both it, parties it, people it, it's actually less random than you think because they they both got really frustrated from these kids so they went to the nearest bar you know and then <laughs> okay like walt i've only seen drink alone i've never seen a bar so i don't know why that would be Walt's impulse to go to a bar well, he was just blackmailed. He, I guess he really wanted a drink, you know? I, I just don't see him going to a bar. Maybe but, Walt but, Jr. was just being really oh, he, annoying at home and he just had to get out of the house to <laughs> drink. Well, isn't he at a bar when he fights with, with Mike? Or did he just go to the bar where Mike already was? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I guess maybe he doesn't drink, but I, I don't know. Well, he does drink because we, we know in this season uh, he's drinking that whiskey. And to oh, agree yeah. with Erich here, like I always like to think of the show and like anything I'm watching from the perspective of the writers' room and like what are mm -hmm. they going for, what are they intending, uh, what are they trying to get away with, and the the fucking tragedy of Jane's dad motivating Walt to take an action that ultimately kills Jane. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with Erich. It's a little too fucking cute, a little too random. And, and I think the all of the end of season two is just everything about Jane's dad is a little too cute, a little too lay random for me. <laughs> Fucking plane yeah. crash. I've already talked about that a million times. But meeting in the <laughs> yeah. bar and leading to Jane's death is almost as fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where uh, yeah. if if that had been a bit more drawn out, if there had been a better. I don't know, better characterization for some of those guys, but they really just seem to be there just to affect the outcome that they wanted to happen for that season, is how do we get a plane crash that uh, Walt somehow inexplicably caused, and it's that. It's <laughs> somehow the fucking air traffic controller's daughter died. And hey, hey, by that logic, Walt. if Walt caused a plane crash, then Jane's dad caused Jane's death, because there's... There's yeah. a person in between these actions here, so you, how dare right. you blame him? Hey, mm -hmm. that that plane had a J in the name, and he just said, oh, chain, so he clearly had to crash it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it, it just he he crashed the real-life Jane, and now he's crashing <laughs> metaphor plane Jane. <laughs> plane yep. Jane. Rip. Yep. Jesse's Jane. <laughs> That's right. Wow. Walt killed Jesse's Jane, but it doesn't make him Jesse's Jane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Should we talk I about mean, Walt? What, what, what did we get out yes. of Walt in these episodes? So, here's the thing about Walt this season. He absolutely goes to asshole uh, territory, but it is incredibly fun to watch. It is incredibly hilarious when he's having uh, uh, Flynn drink in front of oh, Hank. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that is just one of the funniest things ever, and I'm partially uh, influenced by 4chan memes of, uh, like, <laughs> Walt Jr. vomiting <laughs> while, while he just sips his whiskey. It's it's just so fucking funny. What happened in the scene right before that had Walt feeling kind of emasculated, and that's why he was trying to be like this alpha Chad dad who went too far? I think it's What's because it? Hank was kind of talking to... Well, Junior and kind of taking him under his mm. wing. Well, I, I think it was because he was just receiving the good news that he's in remission. So he, he's really mad at that because he actually wanted to die. Yeah, so. that is the big plot point here is that he he before they go on the four days out trip, he sees like a reflection of a scan of his chest and he thinks it's really bad and he's going to die. They go out uh -huh. and have their little adventure. They get lost in the desert for a little bit. He comes back and it turns out, no, actually, your cancer, it's pretty much cured, actually. Like, the whole premise for this show, about 15 episodes in, fuck it. You know what? You're going to be fine. Now it's up to you. Do you continue to be meth man or do you move on and do something else? And ultimately, you know, he might have made a couple bad decisions, maybe. 
Well, he actually did need those 300,000 for the surgery, so I guess at that point it wasn't such a great place to quit, you know? But yeah, I, I guess. He, I, I think like a lot of it. this just goes back to Walt's ego is that Walt wants attention. He wants people to feel sorry for him or bad for him, but he also wants to like, uh, he wants to be the man, tell everyone to fuck off and be the, be, yeah, be the big man as well. And I, I think he's disappointed actually that his cancer is getting better. Like I, yeah. I think he was yeah, hoping yeah, to yeah, die. Much so. Well, yeah, like I, I think that like he's, he's going down a, a flame spiral or some kind of like just huge, uh, flame out and anything that keeps him going and allows him to just keep living is going to be anathema to what he's trying to do. Like, yeah, he wants to do as much as possible before he goes and <laughs> extending that date is just not what he wants. Yeah, he just desperately wants to, to painfully die while coughing, you know? It's <laughs> <laughs> just his dream, you know? It's so, no, but it, so it's like it, to think of that, like the, the way it must being, feel to die of cancer, and then deciding, yeah, oh, that I wish being I being close that. to death, like unlocks something in him that was probably always there, but he wasn't really allowed to express by society. But suddenly being shown, you're going to die soon, allows him to then like tap into that and be like, you know what? If I'm going to go out, I'm going to fucking be the boss of everyone. <laughs> I'm going to be fucking the biggest, baddest motherfucker. If only he would take this chance to become a, a better criminal like Gus, instead of just just being insane like Tuco, you know? Hey, at, at least he could have learned that in this season, but I guess not. <laughs> he just decides to, to kill Jane after all. Well, let's do uh, let, let's take a poll going around the horn here. Would we yeah. have made the same decision Walter White did? You know, you got this girl Jane. She's blackmailing you. You know, saying, "Oh, I know where you work. I know about your family." You know, basically a mini version of Gus here. You know, really threatening to murder his wife and children. That's basically what Jane's <laughs> doing. This is self defense, really. Uh, and he he does not even touch her. He touches Jesse, and she rolls over, starts choking up on her heroin vomit you know deserved i think her body's natural <laughs> reaction to poison that she put inside of it makes sense to me and uh as she's choking out and dying she opens her eyes and sees walter white looking down at her like in her final seconds on earth <laughs> pretty fucking epic uh did walt do anything wrong uh, yes, he killed a beautiful goth girl, so uh, he deserves to burn in hell. Yeah, but she's like 5'8", a little bit too tall. Wow. <laughs> Maybe for hearts. If, if Jane was 5'4", then I would be very angry with uh, Walt. Why do you want them so small? I just wow. want them to be a little shorter than me, dude. That's it. Why? I, I, I really think you're missing out on the tall girls. Like, There's so much to, to cuddle. Florian, how tall are you? Well, I'm, I'm pretty short, too. Oh wow! I think, I think God I'm like, damn! I'm, I think I'm like five six, five five. Jesus Christ! Why do we yeah. fucking podcast with the? Yeah, <laughs> it's you, called you, Freak the Mighty. We're the smart ones. You're the tough one. <laughs> yeah, like you, you probably got the mass of two of us. You know? <laughs> yes, he <you> probably does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> He's too powerful. Wait, so Florian, did Walt do anything wrong in letting Jane choke after she threatened him personally? Well, it's it's really like a, a tough one because, I, I mean, like it, junkies are are such a big problem. Like, if they have blackmail on you and and they they run out of money, there's probably not much that would that would save them, you know. True. And she even says, she, she even says, you, you don't have a way to know that you're safe from me. Like, even if he gives her the money, it's it's so crazy, you know. But I mean, they probably wouldn't have possibly outlasted that money, so. I guess he probably should have been safe, but uh, yeah, I, I, it, it's a, it's a real puzzle actually. I, I think we should put it up for the audience to. No, to fuck the audience. I already figured it out. <laughs> Walt did uh -oh. it. Hey, E. Rich, think about it this way. Think about it this way. Vince Gilligan said in the BBCU, Breaking Bad Cinematic Universe, Walter White is the most intelligent character. Intelligence is a virtue, therefore any decision he makes is virtuous, therefore good. <laughs> I don't know if Walter White has ever done anything wrong at any point. He's Why so would smart. intelligence be a virtue? What the hell? 
That uh, is maybe over in Austria, nature. it's not a virtue. That explains your fucking backwards politics and country. But over here, we value <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> Wait, no, we that's, don't. You have, you have Trump. You have sh- Trump as president. Sh- he, he, sh- oh my God, he's not virtuous nor intelligence. Jesus. Uh, so you agree that intelligence is a virtue. Therefore, it's okay to lie to your wife. It's okay to kill Jane. Wow. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. Okay. Like, Thank if, you. That's what I've been I, waiting for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> but what I, I look, if if we could create an AI that could replace us, I think we should. Okay. I think if there's something that's just that much smarter than us, then then we should just, you know, just give it its chance and let it defeat us. Okay. You know, that's fine. So I guess intelligence really might be the highest virtue. Like, well, like, what's the value of a rock? It's nothing because it's stupid. It doesn't have any <laughs> brain cells. You know. Yeah, that's how we decide which animals we can eat. Well, no, I guess not because well, we, we wait because we because because dogs and pigs are the same. Hey, IQ, if you know? they're dumber than me, I can eat them. That's my rule. <laughs> and uh, whales okay. are defeating me, and so are dolphins. But <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a couple pigs that are smarter than you. Well, I'm not eating those ones. If they were so smart, they can <laughs> escape getting killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they would just break bad and and then. Like, do some kind of crime, become the pig lord of the, the pig That's farm. right, start selling pig meth. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, did we have any other thoughts on Skylar? Did we cover that at the beginning? Like, she starts working for Beneke, and she's, you know, really flirting with him. It's it's really crazy to me how, how apparent it is that Ted wants to fuck uh, Skylar from the very beginning. Mm, like, I think she wants him, too. <laughs> Oh yeah, it, it's definitely mutual. That's one of the reasons she came back to this uh, company, and like it, the dresses she wears, just just everything about this is. Although she's she's incredibly pregnant in, in this in these episodes. Oh, so. that's how you know it's true love. That Ted is even you know he wants her even when she's at her fattest and rightest, <laughs> really. Well, but well, he might like it. <laughs> Skyler. Finds out Ted might be cooking the books. He might not be doing his accounting so right. It's for the sake of his company to keep, you know, be, uh, people getting paid. But he's still breaking the law. And Skylar's the type where you can steal a baby tiara and, and gift it to her. And she will be pissed at you for months. But well, I think that's justified. But she finds out, you know, Ted, he's also cooking the books. He's also breaking the law. He's breaking bad. But the difference here is she can't fuck Marie, but she can fuck Ted. <laughs> is Skylar the world's biggest hypocrite? No. What? She she wouldn't have turned Marie. What's in the if difference she hasn't? between lying in your accounting books and cooking meth, Florian? It's <laughs> I think I think they are morally equally bad. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's just because yeah. Ted's hotter than Walt. Oh, forgive me for being bald because I have cancer. We can't all be as fucking hot as Ted Beneke. <laughs> uh, I do think that certain capital crimes should be punished much, uh, much more extremely. So I unfortunately have to agree. Thank you, Florian. You lose wow. yet again. I, I, didn't even, I wasn't even talking about that. I was just talking about the tiara being what about obviously it? less of a problem than. <laughs> Dude, if you steal something and give it to me as a gift. I have respect and love and, and admiration for you. Like, ah, oh, you saved money and I get something cool out of it. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. So you, you wouldn't have turned in that tiara ever? Dude, Damn. if people steal shit and they send it to my P.O. box, not, not only will I not know, but I will be very happy with free gifts. So What if they it. tell you? Uh, I guess, yeah, you would just wear the tiara. In I will videos, assume I all mail at my P.O. box is satire and a work of fiction. <laughs> wow. I'm going to take the little warning that they put on 4chan, like everything on here is a work of fiction, and I'm going to print that Mm -hmm. off, and I'm going to tape it to my P.O. box so I'm legally protected. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. That is... You you just tell people, everything you send me should be gotten. You you think no more of it. Yeah, it (laughs) should be... (laughs) Yeah, everything you send me, you paid for, and uh, make sure it's really nice and expensive like a diamond. They might have paid the iron price for it, monkey. (laughs) Oh, my God. Oh, my... Wow, the Game of Thrones. Florian, are you cunt struck? What? <laughs> I, I don't. I mean, I, I guess I do get get women to, to slap their vaginas against me occasionally. But wait, what are you talking about? Wait, which part of you do they slap with their vagina? Uh. Hmm. The face. Okay. 
That's fine. What? <laughs> hmm. Yep. Is it like hanging out super far so it's like a like a real slap or is it more just like they're humping your cheek? Oh yeah, like the bigger the vagina the better for sure. Yeah, that's what I've always <laughs> said. Hell yeah. Those, those tiny girls with their tight <laughs> vaginas, no thanks, you know, it's gonna be, gonna be big. Erich, do you concur? Uh, I recuse myself from this conversation. <laughs> it's gonna be real big pastrami, you know, it's gonna be... <laughs> Do we have any Jesse thoughts? Um, it's very sad what happens to Jesse in these episodes. He gets very depressed about Combo's death, and... He unfortunately dips into the worst drug you can use, goth girls. Oh my god, wow. so true. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, she was alright until he started doing the drugs. Damn, what a shame. <laughs> Have you guys ever done heroin? No. Torian? No? No. I thought it was standard uh, issue over there. <laughs> I, I thought all even, drugs were legal over I, I in Austria. I don't even drink. You, you think you have the Netherlands. I'm Hitler saying. literally put cocaine and meth in the fucking MREs for his soldiers, and you don't even have heroin in 2022? What's going on? <laughs> well, people used to sell heroin at the pharmacies too, right? In, yeah, why didn't you stock up? <laughs> wow. Everything I know about heroin is that uh, it's very good. Um, it's not addictive. Um, <laughs> every, every new hit is as good as the first one. Uh-oh. I was kind of disgusted when she was sticking the needle into, like, that dirty cotton ball in the spoon. I was like, what the fuck is in there that she's squirting up? That looks disgusting. Did she put meth in the heroin? I don't know. It, fuck, it looked freaky. Is gross. that possible? <laughs> I think anything's does, possible, but uh, I think they would know. counteract each other quite a bit. She said she puts oh. ice in it. it. Does she mean literal ice? Was it like... Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's to cool it down. Uh, okay, okay. It might be. Yeah, when you heat it up, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, yeah. Well, I think so. I don't know. I hope she's not putting meth in the injectable <laughs> heroin. Because one of them, like, puts you to sleep and the other one keeps you awake. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, so that would I'm just blow up questions. your heart. Yeah. Uh, would it? Well, at least you would be more awake. I don't know. I guess <laughs> I mean, if, I guess if anybody in the comment section has done meth and heroin at the same time, let us know what it's like. Yeah. I, I, mean, I she would just... love to know. She just died from it, so I guess that makes sense. No, according to Erid, she was single-handedly killed by Walter White's bare hands, and he's yeah. solely responsible for her own actions. Yeah. That's what Erid said. Well, he uh, also did give her the money for the drugs. Mm. <laughs> kind of. I think it's hilarious that when they're asked, they're thinking about what they're going to do, Jesse thinks I'm going to be a bush pilot. I'm gonna fly around New Zealand. <laughs> he's like trying to figure out. That's where they filmed Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah, and he saw there'd be castles in New Zealand. That, that makes sense, right? Because they, they have a rich medieval so history. Castles there. and shit. That's right. <laughs> yeah. The castles. What, what do we make of Jesse's uh, drawing skill and uh, him not capitalizing on that in any way? Well, that's probably fine, unless you do furry porn, there's, like, almost no money in drawing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd have to be, a, I guess, a tattoo artist like Jane is, so they really came up with the only career yeah. option available for good drawers. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's making up all these superheroes. But One dude, of them is, like, what, Reverso? Imagine the future where they take, you know, that half a million dollars from Walt, they run off together, start a new life together, they open a little tattoo parlor shop, and the, the two of them do all the tattoos. Uh, th there's no drugs at all. Could have been a beautiful goth. Uh, I mean, I, maybe they smoke weed, because you need to have the, the goth chick and the, the stoner boyfriend, you know, doing their drawings. What a beautiful mm -hmm. world, and Walt had to ruin it. He took that away from us. <laughs> yeah, Walt single-handedly uh, is responsible there. Imagine if in, in season three, they, they branched it out, and it was like Jesse fixes his life and slowly but surely, you know, builds his life with Jane. Meanwhile, Walt working for Gus just gets worse and worse, and then, you know, we get to see there was a way out. And Jesse, he won the day, and Walt suffers and, you know, horribly dies at the end. Better and show. She's... It's just remake Breaking Bad, and it's like a little different every time. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> over and over again. Yeah, they redo like the same five season structure, but they, you know, they change one element of it every time to make it go in a different direction. Kind of like a Full Metal Alchemist. Like we got two different versions of that. Why can't we do Breaking yeah. Bad? I want to see a different version of the same exact thing. Yeah, they're sure. just really old now when they're playing it. <laughs> in, in Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, like the final forty episodes, all takes place in one day. Holy shit. It's like, really? wow, this sunrise is sure is taking a long fucking time. <laughs> it's been like eight hours. Holy wow. shit. But uh, to be fair, One Piece has a, there's like a 100 chapter arc that is also all in one day, so. Fucking hell. That was Jesus. just Rosa. I okay. knew it. I all knew right. that was crazy shit like that that just drags on forever. It's shit that oh, just God. doesn't make sense. Like, how is the sun still in the sky after all of these events have occurred? It's been like 30 hours of runtime in the anime. Well, they were all fighting at light speed. <laughs> and talking? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah. <laughs> they, were, they actually sounded like chipmunks the entire time. <laughs> it was tragic. Oh, boy. Yep, she's really sped up. Oh, uh, we get the introduction of Mike and Gus. So, really, the, the trio of Better Call Saul is all now accounted for. Do we have any thoughts on their <clears throat> introductions? Um, I think all of these characters are very... Hello. You cut out for a from, second. From the yeah. start. Yeah, they're they're all super interesting. I think Mike's introduction, uh, that actor, I can't even remember his fucking name. He's really good. Uh I think putting Gus into a fast food restaurant is just brilliant. Just what a, what a great stroke. Jonathan Banks is the one he Rich is looking for. There we go. I nope. was actually just gonna correct him and say it's it's Mike Ermitrout, but that, that would have been <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> is there even a difference between the actor and the man? No, oh, there is no not. Yeah, no interview has proved me differently. <laughs> uh, he just like does clean up jobs for for all these people, you know, who accidentally killed a girlfriend. It just happens, <laughs> you know. Wait, you think Jesse's responsible now? <laughs> this is evolving. <laughs> wow. wow. Fine, he's not like. Well, I, I mean, I guess it was episode, technically Walt that called him. Okay. <laughs> I think at the end of the episode, we're all going to agree it was Skylar who was responsible <laughs> for Jane's death. Well, yeah, because uh, she I'm gave Walt cancer, over. and that's what started this whole thing. Oh <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> Everything in this universe is caused by Skylar. Well, I think wow. I think Walt has actually manifested the cancer with 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 his shitty personality. Okay. Well, I, I was listening to the Insider podcast, and for the uh, Better Call Saul season three finale, uh, they reveal that Chuck, when he's in his house and it burns down, he d does not die from the fire, but he actually dies choking on the smoke. And he said it's a metaphor for how Skyler gave Walt cancer through smoking. <laughs> wow. Vince that Gilligan said that. Vince and Peter both said that on the podcast. Holy Unbelievable. shit. Unbelievable. Why they Unbelievable. How can you not believe it? <laughs> they said it. It happened. And it makes yeah. so much sense. Yeah, maybe maybe the actress who played Skylar should just sue them already, you know? <laughs> her, her life is They're continuing ruined, you know? her harassment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, she, doesn't she have a new show or a new movie coming out soon? There's something she, new with her in it that has like a whole bunch of... It's a real stacked cast, and we need to look that up. Uh, I'm going to look that I, up. I guess... Because it did sound like a really cool show, actually. So she's called Anna Gunn with two N. Yeah. Let's see. What what is she up to? I guess that's that's crazy. What? Well, I, I kind of. Oh, she was in Deadwood. She... Didn't you like that show, E. Rich? Yeah, Deadwood's fucking oh, awesome. Man, yeah. How much is she in Deadwood? Uh, a little bit. She's uh, what's his name's wife, Timothy Oliphant's. Oh, okay. Better than uh, Walter White, I guess. Wait, that was mm -hmm. her. Jesus! Wow. Yeah. I do not recognize it sugar? her at all. It might be is Sugar. She, Who's in that? Does, does she have black uh, hair? Colin in Farrell. Yeah. No, no, she doesn't. Wow. Well, you know, it might not be this one, because I remember it had a stacked cast, and I don't recognize any mm. of these people. Hmm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Gus talking to Walt? Calling him out for having a junkie sidekick. What a great scene, because I think all of the things that Gus says Walt knows, he just has a relationship to Jesse, and he's not going to 
drop him. Like, as much as he shits on Jesse all the time, like, he's still partnered with him. He still cares about him. Uh, I, I think that is one moment where you can kind of root for Walt and what he's doing and uh, how, he, how he behaves. Well, I, I think that Gus actually killed Jane because he tells <laughs> Walt... He tells Walt that it's such a big problem that that Jesse is on drugs, and Walt really just cr- just tries so hard to get Jesse off the drugs, and and inadvertently causes Jane to blackmail him. So, it, like this conflict might not have happened if Gus hadn't been so anal about Jesse being high. <laughs> yeah, is it? Um, uh. Is Walt a hypocrite for making meth but not wanting Jesse to do drugs? Is that a... Uh, hmm. Because he goes into that uh, heroin house, and that's like one of Walt's best scenes ever is when he himself goes into this fucking like, junkie house with all these fucked up people to go save Jesse. Uh, he sees like firsthand the impact of what drugs are doing to people and ruining their lives. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. hey, hey, Jesse, stop doing heroin so we can go make more meth. <laughs> Yeah, we, we always have like one of these scenes, don't we, in, in each season where, where they just really see how bad drugs are and they just keep choosing this path. Yeah. It's, it's tra- tragic. <laughs> I don't know, like, it, 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 it's, it's hard. I think a lot of people have that. Uh, they're able to keep two things in mind at the same time. Like, Walt undoubtedly knows that drugs are bad, okay? Uh, but <laughs> he's going to keep doing it because he values his family over anyone else who uh, he, he values his family and also his own ego and ability, which is being able to well, make really pure meth. Well, the answer is, is simple that that taking meth makes you stupid and therefore is immoral, <laughs> as we established earlier. So you can't do that, you know. But if you if, if you make it, I guess that's fine. But I, I think like the main thing is that that you're way more likely to get caught by the police if if you're also a junkie, because because him being a junkie definitely causes problems, you know. So it it doesn't really make too much sense to have a, <laughs> such a high risk job and then then work with a junkie who might get you arrested all the time. Do do we think that Walt should have given this up as soon as? Uh it became clear that it was going to be much more difficult uh, than he thought it would be on the distribution end, I mean. Well, once he gets the guest deal, it's pretty simple, right? Yeah. And, like, once he gets well, involved I mean, even with... Uh, well, as soon as... I think the show really changes completely, like you said, once uh, Saul is involved, because then, like, suddenly their possibilities are wide open. So yeah. I, I think he came in at the right time. Mm-hmm. But do we have any uh, final thoughts? Because we're coming up on an hour. So, you know, it's the uh, second half of season two. Anything else that's percolating in the mind? I'm trying to think. Oh, there's a really good segment where Jesse tries heroin for the first time. And he starts floating off of the bed and, it, like, further into the apartment. Uh, and I think that was just a really fun, well-constructed shot that conveys how great it is to do heroin. <laughs> well, finally I think that's the moral of that episode is heroin fucking rules now Florian I, I like... don't you think that Vince as a creator has a responsibility to his audience to not make heroin look fucking awesome and really cool well, how I many people that's... tried heroin because of this episode hell yeah we get to die like Chain. why not that's right <laughs> they made it look fucking metal as shit dude <laughs> It's actually pretty interesting how how Jesse tells Jane about the the half a million dollars right before he gets high, and then Walt ta- Walt tells Skyler about the second phone right before he goes under narcosis. Right before he gets high, okay. basically the same fucking chemical compound too. Yeah, it is. Wow. <laughs> I would imagine so. <laughs> Walter yeah, is a huge yeah. fucking hypocrite because he uses. During surgery. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Why didn't he just go in raw with that cancer <laughs> chest surgery? Hey yeah, guys, I he... picked up on a. You know, we're doing our final thoughts here. I did pick up on a plot hole. If you guys want to hear it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wow. How is this possible? So, I'm ready to withdraw my Bravo from. Ben. You might have to. Uh, Gus has met Walter like two or three times. You know, over the course of this season. You know, they talked mm-hmm. a little bit. In the finale. Gus goes into the police station 
and he sees a photo of Walter White on the donation thing. Yeah. And he points at it and he turns to <laughs> he, he turns to uh, what's his name? Hank. Hank. He's like, is <laughs> is this one of your agents? Uh, uh -huh. Gus, you know that's not one of his agents, dude. You've met him. He's a drug dealer. <laughs> What the fuck? Are you yeah, stupid? No, 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 no. I was Gus so he, dumb. He think he's undercover. Jeez. <laughs> he knows he's a teacher because he's friends with Mike and Mike had all the deets. You know what? You think he has three jobs? You think he's a DEA agent, a teacher, and a drug dealer? I don't think so, <laughs> Gus. You I, fucking idiot. I think it'd be easier to, to make him be a fake teacher than to be a fake drug dealer. <laughs> I, I think that part of the cover story should be believable. That and being a that father a of two is a full-time job in and of itself. How does Walt does Walt not have the same 168 hours in a week that we all have? How's he <laughs> juggling all these responsibilities, Florian? Wow, so I guess that whenever you have kids, then I guess you can't be an undercover cop, huh? I guess That's they right. should just use that. They should just have fake kids. <laughs> e Rich, you're backing me up here, right? This is a plot hole? I think it's a huge pothole. I think uh, Gus isn't asking the right questions here. And uh, <laughs> wow, yeah, man, I, I think his entire operation might be uh, not worthy. Well, if Gus is pretending that he's on the side of the DEA, why wouldn't he like give him a, a tip? Like, oh, that picture of that guy, he's a drug dealer. <laughs> <laughs> you should go arrest him. I'm on your side. He should have said that. I mean, wow. yeah, he'd be playing both sides against each other and yeah well yeah he's playing the middle possible that's right if, if walt can survive an early dea he's definitely worthy of uh <laughs> of wow well yeah there was all 40 chests to test him amazing yeah it would be like the buster call of of breaking bad he has to really yeah. prove his merit yeah. against the government of the world yep yep steel strength and steel uh <laughs> Unless uh, you're the Marine Admiral who can rust steel like they did to Zoro's sword. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess he probably would have easily passed the DEA raid. But you I, think I Walt know. could win a DEA raid? What do you even <laughs> mean? <laughs> well, they don't have, like, I, I mean, they, they have ha guns. If, if they go to his house, they wouldn't find anything. Like, what are they going to do? Nothing. <laughs> hmm. They probably find stuff on his clothes. When did he put the rice in, in the wall? Has it happened yet? Well, they probably wouldn't uh, look that deep, would they? I guess not, because he does find it in the wall, like after the house has been ransacked. He's made the rice in, right? Because that was super. Yeah, early that was on. like beginning of season two, I think, or maybe even. Yeah. No, that that was season one, even, or maybe yeah. the very beginning of season two, I think, because then they try to use it to poison Tuco. I, I guess yeah. if he does it after he's hiding all the money in the wall, then I guess he wouldn't be he would be caught. Yeah, <laughs> that's just my, oh, yeah, my probably, stack of money. Don't, yeah, he don't does have like half a million that. in his laundry yeah. room. That wouldn't be good to find. Yeah, I wouldn't call that scene out where he's carrying Holly around and he's showing her all the money and being like, "This is for you. Look at what Daddy made." That's right. I wish he was my dad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> my dad never gave me fucking money. <laughs> Yeah, just just be like, just have blood money from from the start. Then if you found it. out your dad made the best meth ever, so that he could give you ten million dollars, would you really be mad, Florian? It'd be an honor. I'd be like, dude, my dad's <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> you would? Wow. Yes. He did that for me. He, yeah. he could have done wow. anything with his talents. My dad's a meth kingpin, and he did it for me, and now I'm rich. <laughs> what a fucking badass. Like, Walt Jr., when he gets that money, I hope he figures it out. No, don't you, don't you remember how Walt Jr. specifically hated that, that Walter did all that? He was an edgy teenager, okay? He hasn't even fucking yeah, lived a real around. day in his life. He probably no, has to yeah, go to He's going to start working at a McDonald's and then be like, this fucking sucks. I'm <laughs> glad my dad right. cooked all that meth for me. Yeah. Well, I guess he doesn't even find out that it's from from his dad, you know, when when he gets it from through Gretchen and stuff. So I guess, I, I guess he can live in his delusion, maybe. <laughs> maybe he can hire somebody to make a better website. <laughs> Speaking of which, this podcast is brought to you by Squarespace. Use code uh, Erich McCoy at checkout to, wow. to, to save three dollars on Ballfrog. <laughs> yeah, very real plug. Wow. 
can you make it so people can put in Everidge McCoy to save money on Ballfrog? No, I, I don't think oh. that's possible on Steam. Wait, what? You can't you can't set your own uh, savings Discount code? on Steam? <laughs> no. Wow. But, uh, otherwise, you'd be hearing all the time that, that there's like this Steam game and you should put in this code to get a discount. Well, they should be. I, I, I guess they decided against multi-level marketing. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Maybe Walt Jr. designed the Steam website and that's why it's so stupid. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Do you guys have anything you want to plug? Anybody you want to hug? Erich, go. Uh, you can tweet at me while Twitter still lives at T Z A R R E V A N. Um, and I would like to hug Jane before or after Skylar's, she died. Skylar's pregnant uh, belly. That's the wrongest answer I could think of. <laughs> wow. Is, is that the the most pedophilic <laughs> fetish or, or the least? One unborn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I thought Serbian film with newborn was bad, but Everidge is like, nah, man, in the womb. <laughs> Florian, who would you like to hug? Um, <laughs> well, I'd like to hug Skylar, and I- Stop hugging Skylar! To... What is wrong with you two? Jane well, is I... right there, dead or alive! I already, I already <laughs> said Jane! I said Jane. Wait, you said Skylar, what? Uh, yeah, you whatever. said, Sky no, I, I you said Skylar's said fucking baby bump. I thought I said Jane <laughs> last episode. Oh, okay. Hmm. I can't believe we repeated this. Segment. I can't repeat myself. We have to hug somebody <laughs> different every month. I don't think that's fair. Yeah, there's not <laughs> enough people. I guess we'll end up hugging Gus. Oh, so <laughs> we could hug each well, other a few times. Mm, well, <laughs> anyways, no. I, I'd, I'd like to plug my Rick and Morty video, which took me a crazy amount of time and it didn't get enough views and I'm sad now. Oh, so. no. It's tragic. That is life as so a YouTuber. Effort. Yeah, you you put in <laughs> like a hundred hours of work to make far far less than minimum wage per hour of work you put in, and then nobody watches it. Yeah, that's the Florian depression cycle. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine if you made reliable money on YouTube? Well, you probably lose money on your videos because you pay your editor. Oh yeah, <laughs> big time. <laughs> uh, Florian, what's your going rate for editing your videos? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not discussing that. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, well, I mean, like, if it's a living wage, it's already, like, crazy expensive, so whatever, you know? <laughs> and who would you like to hug? Skylar right. still? Yeah, okay. Skylar did. I, I, I think she was good in the season, and then... And then she, she finally found out all the lies, okay? And, and then she does the right thing. I, I think she deserves it, okay? Oh, uh, we forgot to talk about the pink teddy bear. <laughs> that it's so dumb. I, yeah, I, stupid. I, I don't like that shit. I hate it. <laughs> At least yeah. we can see his eyeball for the next fucking three seasons. Oh, <laughs> it's it's amazing that like from the very beginning of the season they were like, "What is this pink teddy bear? What is the deal with this?" And then the answer is so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I guess the other thing that would have been less stupid would have been if like he gave it to a kid and then the kid burned it or, or maybe the kid got exploded yeah i guess i guess it'd are be you like saying the bird he bike. put an explosive in a teddy bear and then gave it to, to kill <laughs> gave it to brock i guess that is what he would do hmm. jesus bye everybody goodbye bye bye